Hello guys, this is Sean from Korea and today I'm going to go over the weekly overview of IonQ and the quantum computing industry. So here's my three news for the video. First one is the IonQ to open first quantum computing manufacturing facility in the United States. And the second one who will be the IonQ's first QC buying customer. I have some hints on this. And the last one is 2023 Davos Forum shows quantum age has come. All right, so I'll get started. So on January 20th, the IonQ announced plans to open the first known dedicated quantum computing manufacturing facility in the US. So the specific location is the suburbs of Seattle, Washington, and the new facility will house the R&D and manufacturing teams and they are trying to meet the continued customer demand. I guess this means the quantum computing system selling itself. So they are trying to uh, set up the line so they could meet the customer demand and their orders. And with public support from US Senator and from the Congresswoman, they are getting political support, which is one of the biggest hints for this news. And, and IonQ also announced that the broader intent to invest $1 billion through expansion in the Pacific Northwest over the next 10 years. So people might wonder where are they gonna get the $1 billion? And the answer is right here. So they're going to sell the quantum computer, which uh, from the earning call, they said it'll be occurring within 12 to 18 months. So I guess that'll be happening sometime during 2024. So in the next year, they'll be starting to selling the quantum computer, which is worth a lot of money. So they're going to budget this $1 billion from selling the quantum computer. And they are trying to um, set up their uh, manufacturing location in the Pacific Northwest and is trying to expand that location as the time goes. So uh, one of the senators said that these are kinds of investments that happen when we pass legislation like the Chips and Science Act to invest in American manufacturing and build the economy of the future right here at home. So this is a strong hint that IonQ is getting a strong political support, uh, such as from the Chips and Science Act, which the Biden administration has passed recently. And also the location is about 65,000 square foot facility, which is really big in Bethel, Washington state. So this is uh, close to Seattle which is home to regional tech and pharma enterprises such as Microsoft, Google, Amazon, and Panasonic. So the new location will house IonQ's second quantum data center and will be a pr primary production engineering location for IonQ in North America region. So IonQ hopes to add thousands of jobs and opportunities in the coming years. So here's another hint that they're going to expand this location. So they will have their headquarters in Maryland, which is really close to the Washington DC, and it's essential to get the political support. So they're trying to get their headquarters close to the politics, and they're trying to get their manufacturing line set up near the sea in the Pacific North region. So this is uh, like a, their two path, two way, um, strategy. So the Peter Chefman says that uh, the Seattle region has been a hub for tech innovation and manufacturing for decades. So it has the skilled workforce. It was the ideal option for IonQ's new facility. So they will have a lot of neighboring uh, companies such as Microsoft, Google, and Amazon, which I see as a new opportunity to create new partnerships and to have a new customers. So IonQ Vice President of Product Engineering, Dr. Dave Mayhewis, he joined IonQ on last year's March from the competitor, one of the competitor, SciQuantum, uh, which he worked there as a senior leadership role. So he will oversee the build out of the new facility and he will basically be the leader of the um, Seattle region's IonQ's uh, location. So he has uh, two decades of experience managing systems, hardware engineering, module component engineering, customer service and manufacturing operations. So he's like a expert of manufacturing and engineering. One other important thing. So this announcement is latest in the series of developments for IonQ in the Pacific Northwest. So they're trying to get their uh, existence and make it bigger in the Pacific Northwest. So the first one, uh, one of the first activities to do that was to have the partnership with the U.S. Department of Energy's PNNL, which is Pacific Northwest National Laboratory, and they had a partnership which yielded a sustainable and robust supply of barium qubits for IonQ's next generation barium-based quantum computers. So they got the raw materials ready and they now have the manufacturing line setup and they also have the potential customers so 
it's only a matter of time that they'll generate huge revenue. So that's what I think. And let's take a look at who Dr. Dave Mayhew is. So he graduated from the University of Toronto and from the Caltech, he did the PhD of Electrical, Electronics and Communications Engineering. So he had some jobs in uh, other companies as a general manager, vice president of hardware engineering. And then he worked at the, one of the IonQ's competitors, SciQuantum, as a vice president of systems engineering about an year and then two months. And then he moved to IonQ. So this is one of the proof that I think uh, the people in the quantum industry, quantum field, is moving from other companies to IonQ. I think that demonstrates that IonQ is one of the best company or is the best company in the quantum field. So many other uh, very talented people are uh, moving from other companies to IonQ. So I think that's one of the good proof that IonQ is best in the quantum computing field. Okay, so looking at the new facility, it looks like this. It's presented by IonQ and it's near the Seattle uh, called the small city in Bothell. It's 25 minutes away from the Seattle it's only 25 minutes away and if you want to take a look at the facility you could just type in this location or, or this address to the Google Maps and I found this interesting brochure in the Google so this facility was actually for lease a few months ago and the name of the building is Alexandria Center for Advanced Technologies and the location is the same so it looks pretty decent it looks like a very quiet place and very good place to do some R&D and manufacturing. So the bigger picture, so there's three stories building and there's two stories building connected, but I don't think IonQ uh, leased the whole building. So from here, it's the building built in 1997. And we can see here, it's composed of three floors and first floor, about 29,000 square feet. Second floor, 20, uh, second floor is 36. Third floor is all, also 36. And remember that IonQ leased 65K square feet. So it's either one of first and second floor or one of uh, first and third floor. So they didn't lease the whole building. They only leased the two stories. So by looking at the map, it looks like the first floor is more suitable for the labs and Second and third floor looks pretty open, so it must be good for the manufacturing line. So I think they will use the first floor as the R&D team's lab, and lease one of the two floors, two or second or third floor, and using will be using this as a manufacturing line. So my thought about it is that the news of Ionk is opening a new manufacturing facility is not just news of the opening of a facility; it's supported by the politics. Importantly, as part of the Chips and Science Act, which is one of the main legislation that was passed by Biden uh, administration and one of the continuous activities in the Pacific Northwest. And IMQ hopes to create thousands of jobs here in the future. So it's implying huge growth that will be happening around Seattle, Washington. So they will invest a lot of money uh, in the next 10 years. It said $1 billion. So we'll have to monitor how it goes. Also, the Seattle is area of, of home to several tech and pharmaceutical companies and it has hot headquarters of Microsoft, Amazon, Blue Origin and Expedia. And I found interesting news in Korean that was published in October 2021 that Seattle is emerging as a center for the tech industry. So Google and Apple is buying a new building there to expand their office in the Seattle. So the article basically says that Seattle is emerging as the second Silicon Valley uh, because the industrial soil created by large tech companies, abundance of human resources and infrastructure improvement by the state and from the city governments. So they are developing a light rail and lowering the cost of living, which is lower than the uh, cost of living in Silicon Valley and exemption from personal income taxes and Amazon actually started from Seattle and if you remember the IonQ CEO Peter Chefman was director of engineering at Amazon Prime so he worked there four years and a nine months so Peter Chefman brought a lot of people from Amazon and from Blue Origin so there must be a reason why IonQ moved to Seattle and I also remember that Amazon is holding like 5 million warrants of IonQ. So there must be potential uh, partnership going on. And in addition to existing partnership companies, cooperation with companies located around Seattle, such as Amazon, expects it to generate more sales. So that's just my expectation. 
And IONQ plans to invest $1 billion over the next 10 years for Pacific Northwest expansion. So it'll be funded, this is just my personal thinking, so I think it'll be funded with nine figures of revenue that's coming from the sales of quantum computer system that'll occur between the next 12 and 18 months. So I expect this will be happening sometime during next year. And sure sellers like Scorpion Capital and Pessimist got punched on their faces. So IonQ is doing great. IonQ need, just need time to grow at least five to 10 years. So let's not look IonQ with short sight. So like the reports from all the Boston Consulting Group or uh, all those famous consulting companies, the next two to three years will be a time when the leading groups in quantum computing will be clearly divided. So I think IonQ is merging as one of the leaders. And for example, Rigetti, uh, their CEO actually resigned recently. So I think IonQ is going up, Rigetti is going down. So this is actually happening. So let's keep an eye on who will lead the quantum computing industry. And there's a huge investment opportunity uh, here. And the second news is that Poland is approaching to IonQ. So there was a interesting um, a writing from Rafael Sordin. He said that he had a meeting with Noam Zakay. If you don't know who he is, he's a, one of the uh, director of IonQ's European branch. And they talked about exploring ways to work together in the coming months. So pretty interesting, right? So Rafael, he's an economic diplomat advisor on technology and economic policies at the Embassy of the Republic of Poland in Washington, D.C. So he actually met one of the IonQ's important guy. So Noam Zake, he responded, Dear Rafael, thank you for hosting me. Uh, I believe that together we could increase the quantum technology footprint and collaboration across the region. So it's, it's implying there might be a potential partnership going on with the Poland. And for Noam, he worked from IBM for almost 30 years as business development executive and he recently moved to IonQ and he is a managing director of IonQ's European branch, which is located in Germany. And he's also directing the IonQ's branch of Israel. And another country, Switzerland approaches to IonQ as well. So Rima Alamedi, she's a, a person who recently moved from NVIDIA to IonQ. So she's the chief revenue officer at IonQ. And she said that it was a pleasure to, and honor to ambassador from the Switzerland to discuss quantum computing and Switzerland's plans to play a central role in building quantum applications. So another potential partnership here. And the Embassy of Switzerland also uh, wrote about it. So Swiss delegation recently entered the United States and participated in the renewable energy panel discussion and also to CES. An interesting thing is that they only visited one quantum companies, which is IonQ. So I believe there's uh, something big going on with the European companies with IonQ. So here's some picture of uh, this happening. So here we see Jung Sang Kim, Peter Chefman, Rima Lamedin with the Switzerland Embassy people. And also uh, one of the IonQ employees presenting the IonQ hardware to the Switzerland Embassy people. And then CEO Peter Chefman doing some presentation. Okay, and the last news is about the 2023 Davos Forum, which just recently uh, finished. And IBM CEO, Arvind Krishna, he said something about quantum computing in the Davos Forum again. So quantum computers are not simulation or virtual thing. They have already reached very real level of 400 qubits and IBM is planning to reach 1000 qubits within this year. IBM will be able to introduce the world's first 1000 qubit quantum computer system. So if a com quantum computer equipped with more than 1000 qubit, people think this will have better performance that, um, than that of the world's best supercomputer. And this is not actually entirely true. By what Chris Monroe said that is if we get to 70 logical qubits, 70 logical qubits means a perfect qubit without any error. But from here, qubits means uh, basically physical qubits. So this might be worthless. So it's not important whether how many uh, physical qubits we have, it's important to have more useful qubits, like logical qubits or alg algorithmic qubits that IonQ is using. But anyways, um, somebody wrote about it, so I, I assume many people think 1000 qubit is one of the uh, important milestones. 
So it might change how people think about the quantum computing. And he also said that recently a paper came out in China saying that 400 qubits can break today's encryption system, but he doesn't believe it. Although quantum computers will not completely replace existing computers, they will be the key to solving various problems that will be that's uh, impossible to solve with the current classical computers, which is materials, chemistry, encryption, and optimization problems. All right, so here's the IBM's uh, technical roadmap. So they recently reached 433 qubits with Osprey chip last year, and this year they are trying to reach the 1000 qubit with Condor, and then in 2024, 1400 qubits, and then 2025, 4000 qubits, and beyond they will reach 10k. 100k. But important thing here is they will uh, apply the error correction, which is a technique to create a perfect logical qubit in 2026. And IonQ is trying to uh, do that almost in the same period between 2025 to 2026. So we would expect um, the perfect qubit will be uh, realized uh, sometime during 2025 to 2026. So, and one interesting other thing that uh, president Yoon, uh, president of Korea, also had a speech at Davos Forum and after the speech he went to Federal Institute of Technology Zurich and had a conversation with scholars of quantum science. That's really interesting, right? So he said that interest in the quantum field is increasing and 2022 Nobel Prize winners were produced among quantum technology researchers. The time for quantum technology to blossom is approaching and Korea is also selecting quantum technology as one of its national strategic technologies and concentrating its capabilities at the national level. So the president's office said quantum technology will be a game changer within the next 10 years. I think this is very important that this is uh, official announcement and Korean officials think that quantum technology will be a game changer within 10 years and the uh, time for quantum technology to blossom is approaching. So here we could feel that the quantum age is already here. So here's some picture of him having a conversation with scholars of Switzerland. And my thought about it is that European countries are interested in IonQ, like such as Poland and Switzerland, implying that the potential customer of physical sales of quantum computers may be governments, not corporations. So we'll see about that. And I believe this is aligned with the U.S. Chips and Science Act and U.S. is trying to reinforce the alliance ship with European countries versus Russia and China. And IBM reached 400 qubits last year and expected to exceed 1000 qubits this year. And we don't know how many qubits are really actually usable due to the high error rate of IBM's quantum chip. But it is expected that business and public awareness will change due to reaching the important milestone of 1000 qubits. So I, I expect a lot of money will be flowing in to the quantum computing um, companies. So there might be a stock price going up for the IonQ, IBM, Rigetti and other uh, quantum computing companies. And President Yoon also said that the quantum technology will be a game changer within the next 10 years. And this is just my speculation, but as the Republic of Korea is one of the strong allies of the United States, I believe it is expected that there will be an IonQ Korean branch opening pretty soon. So IonQ already has Canadian uh, branch and Israel and Germany branch and I don't think it'll be weird to have uh, IonQ Korea branch pretty soon and whether you realize it or not the quantum age has already arrived so this is what I wanted to say all along all right so I gave you a few news about the quantum computing and how hard IonQ is doing and how well IonQ is doing their business and I hope you enjoyed the video and I will talk to you guys next week thank you for watching Please leave comments, like the video, and please subscribe. Thank you.